Can too much vitamin C lead to kidney stones? Let's talk about that. So we're talking about vitamin C today and does too much vitamin C lead to kidney stones? So vitamins and supplements are a big topic when it comes to the kidney stone diet. And actually anyone who might be new here, go to kidneystonediet.com where you can follow along with everything we're talking about. You know, the vitamins, I know people get annoyed with me. Everybody wants to take vitamins. I get it. Why do I have to eat vegetables, Jill? This is what I hear. I'm not making this up. Who cares about vegetables? I'll just take vitamins. We just don't absorb them that well, guys. We're not supposed to be taking pills. People will say, well, Jill, I want to do something natural. So I supplements are not natural. They are made in a factory. They're not natural. But bell peppers are. Broccoli is. People now have just shut off their YouTube and have gone elsewhere. But it's true. I'm just here to tell you the truth. That's all I'm saying. So vitamin C. Can it increase your stone risk? Absolutely. Why? Because too much vitamin C can increase your urine oxalate. How much is too much vitamin C? I've read studies that say 200 milligrams of oxalate, uh, 200 milligrams of uh, vitamin C can increase it. I've read 500. I've read 1,000. There has been, and Jeff, I'll send you this study so it can go under the, in the show notes. But there was a study that for men, it was in Sweden. They took a study and they did a study and it was 1,000 milligrams of vitamin C increased stone risk in men. Doubled it doubled their kidney stone risk by taking 1,000 milligrams of vitamin C, okay? And so, but like I said, I've read studies where eat a lot smaller amount. So why men and not women? Why is this particular in men? And researchers say, eh, we don't know. But here's some hypotheses that we may think. Estrogen may protect women from this extra vitamin C because estrogen keeps women's citrate on a higher level. And so maybe this is also why postmenopausal women tend to get more stones than premenopausal women because they have extra citrate. And now remember folks, citrate, why a lot of you are on potassium citrate, um, but you can certainly get citrate from fruits and vegetables. Some of you will have really low citrate, so you will need a potassium citrate pill or some kind of boost that your urologist will suggest. You only know this if you do a 24-hour urine collection. Yes, again, I'm going to tell you, you must get a 24-hour urine collection. So citrate is important because it binds with calcium. And so when we have excess oxalate in our system, that calcium will be protected from the excess, from the good amount of citrate. So oxalate is trying to hang on to calcium, but he can't get her because citrate is protect, uh, protecting calcium, okay? So that could be a reason. Men tend to have lower citrate levels than women, okay? Um, the other thing is, the other thing is, men tend to have higher urine oxalate. They tend to have, like I said, lower levels of citrate, and they tend to have more concentrated urine because they're not carrying around that big giant Stanley water bottle like women do. Now, whether women are drinking from it is another story, but they're carrying it. So men tend to pee less, okay? So these are all reasons that men can be more affected from the vitamin C than women because of what they're doing. They tend to eat less fruits and vegetables as well than women. This is just the average. I'm not saying all because there's always a Frank and a Dick and a Harry that says, not me, Jill, I eat plenty. I see you. I, I care about that, but I'm just saying the average. So also, it could be that men are taking maybe, you know, when, when people are in a study, they're not coming in the lab and somebody's giving them their dose of vitamin C or whatever they're studying. Could be men took more in the studies. Could be they took higher doses. Could be, again, they're not having a great diet. So all that will make a difference. They could be eating less fruit. Like I said, they could be eating less calcium. They could be drinking less fluid. That all makes a difference. So what do we do? How do we... People are taking vitamin C because they think it's a magical thing to boost your immune system. 
Can it help your immune system? Sure. Sure. But many of you are taking 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 milligrams of vitamin C. It does not all of a sudden super boost your immune system, so you know. So first of all, I'm going to suggest if you are a stone former, I would not suggest taking vitamin C. I really wouldn't. You don't need it if you're following what I always promote, a healthier diet. So following the kidney stone diet by getting your fruits and vegetables. Also, guys, you know, a lot of you come to me and you're like, you know, my citrate's really low. Fruits and vegetables. That's how you increase citrate. Jill, my pH is very acidic because you're a diabetic. Fruits and vegetables. But Jill, I have diabetes. I can't eat all fruits. Eat the ones you can eat. And also pair them with something like Greek yogurt. Like the berries are super high in fiber. You're pairing it with Greek uh, yogurt, um, which has calcium and protein. So that's all good. But the point is, food is going to help your immune system much better, much more effectively than these synthetic pills are doing. Now, if you have special medical problems and you need to be following uh, your doctor and your doctor has ordered vitamin C supplements, absolutely. I do not override a doctor's order, but I've never met many. There's not many patients that are, you know, needing to take vitamin C supplements. Most doctors are not recommending that. People are just taking these things that they, you know, think that will boost their immune system. I'm going to be extra annoying right now and tell you what does very effectively boost your immune system or maintain it. Eat a healthy diet. You don't have to be perfect every single day, but you do need to eat responsibly, and that includes fruits and vegetables. Red peppers are a good source. Oranges, yes, they're higher in oxalate, but just you can include an orange a day. That's not going to make anybody form a kidney stone. Get your calcium needs met every day. Broccoli. Google hot, by, uh, veggies high in vitamin C. Eat them if you're worried about it. But all fruits and vegetables are going to provide you with a healthier immune system. Washing your hands throughout the day. Wow, does that work well although most people do not wash their hands throughout the day. The other thing is get good sleep. So effective for a good immune system. When somebody's sick, step on back. Don't go to the party if you have several people sick. Stay away from sick people. This may be controversial, but I do do this because of my history of cancer, and I do have uh, 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 a, a slightly lower immune system. I do mask up when I'm on a plane simply because forget about politics, folks. That's not why I'm saying it. We're talking about immune system. I am not going to be sitting in a room that has recycled air without wearing a mask. I'm not doing it because I don't want to get the flu, the cold, nothing. I don't want nothing. Okay. I got sick enough. I've been sick enough and I deal with illness on a regular basis. So that's what I do. You don't have to do that. I'm just suggesting other ways in which to do it. Stay hydrated. So these are all ways naturally, naturally, you can boost your immune system. And I'm always somebody who's going to advocate diet, lowering your sodium, lowering your sugar, lowering your weight, eating less processed foods. Doesn't mean you can't have a ding dong, a Cheeto, a Dorito. I don't care. But I just want you to overall lessen the amount of processed food you're eating. All of those things will increase your immune system, maintain your immune system. Very effective. So kidney stone risk and vitamin C, it raises it. I would not suggest it at all. So, and, but I will say this, if you're taking like a little dose, like some of you are going to hang on to those multivitamins and that's okay. If you want to do it, I'm not here to uh, tell you you can't you do what you need to do because you're all grown-ups of course do what you feel comfortable with but if it's like a little dose like a hundred milligrams of vitamin C in your vitamin I'm not worried about that honestly I'm not but if it's if it's 150 200 500 thousand I wouldn't chance it guys lithotripsies ureteroscopies 20 thirty thousand dollars not worth that little boost of vitamin c when you can get a beautiful boost of vitamin c and and absorb it much better from natural 
fruits and vegetables. That's what I got on that, Jeff. What do you think? Yeah, I think that's perfect. And you can find everything about the diet that can help you prevent kidney stones. It's Kidney Stone Diet. And it's just a set of goals. Just head over to kidneystonediet.com where Jill can help you with free and some paid resources to prevent future kidney stones. So I think with that, we'll wrap and we'll see you next week. Bye, everybody. Thank you.